Right, this is my post-fight video for Deontay Wilder versus Johan de Hapaz. Uh, it's Sunday morning, I've just watched the fight back now. Uh, I didn't stay up and watch it live. Uh, so I appreciate I may not be uh, one of the first channels to, to put up some thoughts. But nevertheless, I was keen to, to throw my hat in the ring and chuck in my uh, few thoughts on the fight. So, first things first, quite an entertaining fight. Very one-sided, you'd probably give Deontay Wilder every round um, before an 11th round stoppage. Nevertheless, quite entertaining action. Uh, there was one or two quieter rounds, but on the whole it was a it was a decent fight. And, and credit to the Hapaz, you know, he, he did better than a lot of people, I'd say including myself, expected him to do. He got stopped on his feet, he took a lot of punishment, but he never went down. He showed an excellent chin and he showed an excellent heart. Um, in terms of how the fight started, the Hapaz was quite, he was basic, but relatively effective. He'd walk in with a very, very high guard, he'd try and block the majority of Deontay Wilder's work from the outside, and his guard was tight, his guard was disciplined, and he did manage to keep most of Deontay Wilder's offence off him. Having said that, as he got tired, as the fight went later, Wilder was getting through more and more. Um, but the Hapaz's tactics, you know, he was a much smaller man, so he kind of walked Deontay Wilder down. Very much put Deontay Wilder on his back foot here in the early rounds. It was the Hapaz coming forward with his hands up, and it was Deontay Wilder going on the back foot, pumping the jab. When the Hapaz was able to get inside on Wilder, or certainly in range, let's put it that way, he was throwing a jab. His jab was relatively accurate, relatively efficient. He caught Deontay Wilder a few times, um... You know, Wilder didn't really have too much defence against the jab. You saw Wilder with a very, very swollen eye in this fight, which was uh, uh, a product of that. You know, the Hapaz was also working the body of Wilder, and Wilder's body defence was not very good, uh, to say the least. You know, the Hapaz was hitting his body regularly, both with the jab and also with hooks inside, you know. So, uh, yeah, the, the Hapaz was having some effect relatively basic tactics but the sort of thing you want to do if you're against a taller man who's a power puncher you want to keep your hands up high you want to make sure you don't get caught with anything silly and you want to make sure you're not standing at the end of his his jab um his jab all night so so that was good john tay wilder um i thought he looked very sharp in the early rounds you know his jab looked a real real weapon in rounds you know, the first couple of rounds. I did think his jab got a bit lazier and a bit less snappy as we went deeper into the fight. But in the beginning, his jab was like a laser. It was a bit of a battering round, and it looked like a very, very effective weapon. I also thought, um, and this is one area that Wilder slightly impressed me here, that he showed slightly more versatility than we're used to seeing. Obviously, Deontay Wilder's trademark is the long one too, but what we saw from him here was regularly using the hook we saw him drop Eric Molina with a lead left hook, which I like, and I said that he should throw more often. Here it wasn't just lead left hooks, it was more sort of jab hook. And whilst it was a bit wide, uh, I liked what I saw from Wilder. It wasn't just the fact that he was throwing a long one too. It was actually um, the fact that at certain times he decided to get on the inside, you know, fight up close. He was throwing... A decent uppercut on the inside, you know, a tight little inside uppercut, which he was catching the Hapas with. And, you know, he, he was showing that he wasn't afraid to... He's not just this lanky guy who likes to box from range and throw a one-two, but he's able to have a bit of a scrap if he needs to. So, yeah, fair play to Deontay Wilder on that front. A um, few other points that I wanted to make about Deontay Wilder. He had the Hapas very hurt in the third round and the tenth round. Now, what he didn't do on those occasions is rush in like we've seen him do previously. You know, like when he windmilled against Audley Harrison. Slightly more discipline than that, and he stuck to his boxing a bit more. I think that's a really, really big improvement alongside the, uh, the, the new punch versatility he's showing. One thing I would say, he was very much headhunting in this fight. Uh, he needed to throw to the body more, and I felt that that could have added something different to his offence. Because, you know, if the Hapaz was so tight with his guard and so high that throwing to the body a bit more would have been a, uh, a better tactic. So, all in all, I thought both guys actually performed better than I expected to. Yeah, whilst the Hapaz didn't really take a round off Wilder, uh, he stuck around for a long time. And he was actually able to ask some questions of Wilder. Uh, and he was able to expose some frailties. I mean, as I say, to be honest, the way that Deontay Wilder's defence is, is his big issue. And I think that is why 
I would certainly favour Povetkin, Fury, Klitschko over Waller. Because he's facing guys like, you know, the Hapaz, who isn't really a big puncher. But the fact is, he was getting marked up, he was getting regularly hit by the jab. The Hapaz was catching him with some hooks, some, you know, really decent hooks from the Hapaz. Uh, and if those had come from a more noticeable puncher, we could have seen Wilder on the floor. So, yeah, the Hapaz performed very, very well. Um, credit to him, he showed a lot of heart and a great chin. Wilder, as I say, there was some improvements from him there. The jab looked good early on, a um, bit more punch variety than just the one-two. It wasn't just staying on the outside, mixed it up a bit on the inside. Uh, again, saying that, you know, whilst he may not have the best chin in the world, he doesn't have a pure glass jaw and he can certainly take a few punches. So, yeah, credit to Deontay Wilder. Entertaining fight. Uh, I think realistically, you know, the Hapaz wasn't in my top 25 in the heavyweight division. He was probably someone I'd rank around 40th in the heavyweight division, that sort of level. Um, and I think we're going to need to see Wilder. Uh, <laughs> I know it's ridiculous given that he's a world champion with two defences, but we need to see Wilder fight someone someone decent. Uh, hopefully Povetkin, that would be an entertaining fight. I think if Povetkin was able to have the same effect that the Hapaz was, he'd probably not Wilder out with his punching power because... You know, Povetkin's punching pretty hard these days, as, uh, you know, we can ask Mike Prez if you don't believe me. But, um, yeah, all in all, I'd say it was an entertaining fight, improved performance by both. I think Wilder is starting to iron out some of the flaws he has. You know, he's starting to become a bit more versatile, a bit more disciplined. Um, yeah, and, uh, I thought against the low level of opposition, he, he looks slightly better than he'd done against... Eric Molina, for example. Um, but in terms of uh, defence, I think the defence is still the area that needs to be worked on, and I think the defence is still the area he may suffer. Let me know your thoughts on this. How did you see the fight? Many thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please give me the thumbs up.